Hello, my name is Keith Dorn, and today I'm going to be going through a manufacturing tech tip of utilizing virtual components. So, right off the gate, an inventor uh, looking at an 18-part assembly file and uh, obviously not a whole lot going on in here, but if you check in my model browser, I've got a number of components listed inside of this space. Each one of these components represents some of the intangible or non-modelable components that we might want to work with inside of our assembly files. And by building them up inside of a single assembly document, I've gone through all the trouble of inserting metadata or property values on each one of these components. Now, in addition to that, I've specified how they're going to function as far as the bomb's concerned. So let's just take a minute to go through this process. First, the first thing I'm going to do is start the create command. And within the create command, I'll just give this a basic name. Glue uh, three ounces. Before I specify where I'm going and what I'm working with, I'll just go ahead and specify that this is a virtual component. And with that, I'll go ahead and hit OK. But before I do that, I should probably change this to being a purchased component since I'm not making glue, I'm buying glue. In doing that, it will add the virtual component to my setup. Now the next thing that I want to do in here is make some configuration changes to just embed the metadata that I'm going to be needing for build material purposes and generating parts of some drawings. First thing I'll do is go into the component settings, and in the component settings, the name is the dictated name on Model Browser. Beyond that, it is a purchased part, but my quantity is not going to be each. In this case, I want to specify that I'm buying three ounces of glue. Uh, that way, when I generate my, my parts list, it's going to display that same three ounces. So in this case, the first thing I'll do is just go in and add a new user parameter. Using the nomenclature that I've used already, quantity, I'll spec my unit type to ounce masses. And with ounce mass selected, um, I'll tell it that it's three. A couple things to note in here, the values that are available to be used. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at uh, length, mass, or value. Um, all of the other unit types inside of this space, unfortunately, will not be able to be used for a bomb. Uh, I learned that actually myself here when I was going through this uh, setup. So ounce mass, three. With that added, I'll specify to use my amount as specified. Now, the reason that I'm using individualized base unit or base quantities is that when I go to the next process, when I use this in another assembly file, I want to make sure that I'm not overriding or trying to create duplicate values and causing problems from there. So each one of these is getting its own unique uh, base quantity value. Next, I'll go in and just like any regular part, I can access the I properties of this component. From here, I'll specify the name of the company we deal with to get the glue, some of the values as far as a part number, stock number, description, and our overall cost. Beyond that, I could apply any other values inside of this space that I want. And if I do have my physical specifications built for this material, I could go in and select that material and add it in. In this case, I am going to define the overall mass. So I'll just go ahead and wipe this out. Ooh. Oh, capital letter, my mistake. There we go. And get my adjusted mass. From here, I'll, I'll go ahead and close that and save my file. So now that I've added in an extra object, I want to go in and add some of these 
these virtual components to assemblies that I already have. And kind of the other reason that we've built up this master virtual assembly is it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. We've got all the values in here that we've already, that we're gonna need, and instead of having to manually recreate a new virtual part and then fill in all these blanks, add in the quantity specifications and so on, we've done it all in this single part file, or a single assembly file, and now I wanna utilize one of these components. And it's simply as easy as right clicking on it and copying it, and then pasting it into the system. Now in doing that, if I check the drawing for this, the bill of materials will already update automatically. So in this case we can see we've got our new material count. So with our new part, our new component added to the system, I might want to go in and specify, okay, which one of these parts is actually going to need the grease, which one of these is going to be, which one of these components need the application of said object. So in this case, I can simply select the objects that are going to be associated, select the balloon, and attach a balloon. And in this case, I'm going to use the list option. At the bottom of my list, I'll see my virtual component. I can simply click OK on it and then specify where I want the extra balloon to land. I could then repeat this process for any other components that are going to need the, the grease component attached and further fill in my overall bill of materials. So over the course of this exercise, we added in virtual components into a master assembly file of virtual components for use later on. We then copied and pasted those components into our assembly space that would then add them to the bill of materials and parts lists. And again, you can notice in here that our quantities are in, in fact correct. And as we add those components in, we can then add the balloons for those intangible objects to further annotate where those objects are going to be located within our assembly space. Thanks for watching.